let's start from the beginning. We're playing d4, g6. All right, this makes mm -hmm. perfect logical sense. So e4, bishop g7, knight f3, c5, bishop c4 makes sense. Knight takes, knight c6, knight takes, pawn takes. Here, we're starting to have the first problem, right? Now this is mm -hmm. not a queen pawn anymore, right? This is basically a Sicilian. So, uh, the problem yeah. that you have here is that I am attacking your knight with my bishop and with my knight, right? That yeah. can be annoying. But if you take on c6, and this is something that you said, basically if I take with my b pawn, and now I have three central pawns and you have just one, right? Yeah. I mean, the pawn on c2 kind of cons, but at the same time it is not pushing d4 or something in the future. So that means that my pawn is probably going to wind up in d5. This pawn is going to challenge this one. As you take with your e pawn, what's going to happen is that I'll recapture with my c pawn, and I'll have two central pawns, and you won't have any. Yeah. You know? Hmm. So that's one strategic problem here. See how? Also, you're moving your the same piece once, twice, three times, right? Three times. For one piece, uh, I'll just move once. Yes. So that may be another problem. Mm -hmm. Another way to defend the knight on d4 would have been simply to play bishop e3, for example. Maybe even c3, or just simply yeah. to come back with your knight to f3 or to e3. And nobody dies because of that. I guess mm -hmm. f3 is a little bit better because your bishop still has the square b3 to go backwards, and that could be nice. But in this position, you cannot take on c6 because that's giving me the first strategic call advantage here, if you will. So now what I need to do is yeah. basically I knight f6, castle, and then d5, and I'm going to have the central control. It's not to say that the game is over. It's not to say that I'm winning. Oh. Like, oh, look at this, I'm winning. No, it's just a little advantage. I have a much harder time. Yeah, this is going to be hard, right? So, mm -hmm. knight takes is it, little mistake here. Remember that what okay. you're doing is that you're bringing more pawns towards the center in the opening and in the middle game, and that's going to be really dangerous. So, something that we have to have always in mind when we're playing chess is the space and the central control. I mean, at least during the middle game and during the opening. And in this position here, that's l giving me an edge, you know, and that can be annoying. So, you castle. Makes perfect logical sense. Rook b8, c3, right? And here, I don't know if c3 is a move that I would like to play in this position. I know that there are threats on b2, but maybe just a move like bishop b3 could do the work because you're just going backwards, getting your bishop out. I mean, of this square mm -hmm. where you're gonna have some trouble when I play d5, right? So you lose a tempo when I play d5. If you're going to lose a tempo, why don't you simply play bishop e3, defend yeah. directly here, and eventually mm -hmm. you can just simply get your knight out, basically get your bishop out, and at least you are not losing the, the other tempo with d5, right? That could okay. be a little advantage. So, see how one more time. Rook b8, what am I doing here? Um, I hope you, you have heard me saying something about evaluation in the videos before, because I say that a lot. Have you heard me saying something about it? Evaluation? Yeah. I think so, yeah. So, basically, something that I want you to do in your games is to evaluate. How come? Because if you do not evaluate, or if you do not see what's going on on the board with every single one of the pieces, and you do not diagnose the problem that you have, then you cannot solve the problem mm -hmm. that you do not know you have. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, in this position, for example, an evaluation will be going about every single one of the pieces, every single one of the pawns, and then try to figure out what's the problem. So, in this position, um, for the white pieces, for example, we already castle, or rook wants to go to e1, possibly because on f1 is doing nothing, uh, or bishop is on c1, that's a problem, we want to develop the bishop, the knight is on b1, that's a problem, we want to develop the knight, the rook is on a1, it's doing nothing there, that's another problem. See how we have three problems in this position? Also, in the future, moves like d5 for the black pieces could basically give them the center, that's another problem. There is pressure on b2, that's another problem that we have with the white pieces. Also, um, maybe we should figure out a way to try to take advantage of the center in the future. That's another problem that we have, right? So, um, that's in general terms. This could go like deeper and deeper and deeper, but I'm just throwing some ideas, right? So, yeah. with the black pieces, what's the problem that we have? Basically, that we want to move our knight out. But if we move our knight out, then moves like e5 could come, and then where do I move my knight, right? That's annoying. I'm basically losing a tempo and I do not have a lot of squares to go to because basically my knight has no squares to go to. So if I go yeah. backwards, I'm losing a tempo. That's something that I don't want to do. That's a problem that I have. Knight f6 is not working and it's a move that I want to do so that I can get my king out of the center, which is another problem that I have. So I have mm -hmm. to wait for it. Also, my bishop is on c8, it's doing nothing. I want to get, it, uh, I want to get this out. Also, my rook on, B, uh, on, on a8 is doing nothing. I want to get it out. So. 
See how I'm just realizing what the problems are? I'm trying to solve them. So, what's the move that are gonna solve my problems with the black pieces here? A move like knight f6 could be a one a move that could solve my problem, but nonetheless it has a refutation with e5 probably. I didn't want to play against that. So, uh, for me to solve this problem, I probably should play something like d6, e5, and knight f6 eventually. So that would yeah. be nice. Uh, as due to the fact that I cannot play knight f6, and due to the fact that I still can um, keep your problem on b2 and keep your bishop on c1 and make you react to that move, uh, then I play rook b8. See how I'm just trying to decrease my problems, increase yours. So, yeah. rook b8, I get rid of one of my problems, right? You might argue that I get into another because bishop f4 could be annoying in the future, but nonetheless I thought that d6 and e5 could come and defend. So, uh, also, I'm getting pressure on one of your problems here, I'm keeping your bishop tied to the pawn on b2, and that's annoying. So see how, from this position, I'm starting to, I'm starting to take the initiative. Do you know what the initiative is in chess? Oh, yes. yes. Basically, the initiative are threats, right? The guy who, who has the threats has the initiative, because the other guy has to react to the threats and has to, most of the time, get a defensive position or a passive position. So, as I am getting activity here, I'm forcing you to react to my moves, see how I'm just acting, you are now reacting, and I'm solving my problem. So, see how I'm not doing anything crazy, but this is pure strategy here. C3, just because you have to defend your problem. Also, my bishop on, on C8 is doing nothing. I want my bishop to go out so that eventually mm -hmm. I can push D5. If these pawns were mobile, I mean, if I could move these pawns, this bishop is not going to be 7. Why? Yeah. Because then what do I do with this, right? This is going to be trapped yeah. forever. Nonetheless, as this bishop can go to b7 and push the move that I want to play, which is d5, and as these pawns are going to be mobile in the future, I can push bishop b7. I can, I can pull it off. How come? Because I eventually will have some activity with this bishop, and this bishop is going to be a part of the central control. Do you see that? It's just yes. a simple move. So, bishop b7. Solve one of my problems. At the same time, uh, I don't care that much about the pawn on b2 right now, because eventually I'll just have some edge trace with my rook, that could be nice. And at the same time, I'm just finishing my development. I do not want to go crazy about the pawn on b2, because evidently I cannot take it. I just want to get a, a couple of tempi on it, and then try to finish my development. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, bishop b7, one more time. Remember what we did before. We evaluated, we saw what the problems were. I increase a little bit your problems, right? I decrease mine, see how I'm just getting two pieces out, and at the same time I'm just trying to follow my plan. What's my plan? To get to my ideal position. And what's my ideal position? A position where my problems have been solved. For example here, my ideal position with the black pieces would be knight f6, d5, e5, castle, rook b8, bishop probably b7 or maybe even bishop d4 eventually, and then I'll have the control of his center, maybe then rook um, the rook of f8 will go to e8 and see how that will be my ideal position where all my problems are solved and where my position makes perfect logical sense and I'm in my ideal situation to generate an attack or to improve the position of my pieces. Does that make sense? Yes. Am I getting to my ideal position with rook b8 and all of these things? Yeah. Kind of, right? So, I'm not doing anything, anything crazy. I'm just diagnosing what's happening. After I generate my diagnosis, I try to find out a way to solve my problems, to increase yours. And here, bishop b7, bishop f4, d6. So d6 seems to be a little bit um, silly, right? Like, if I want to play d5. But nonetheless, I probably should play e5 if, before playing d5, because your bishop is on f4, right? And it's generating x rays on my rook on b8, on b8, and that could be annoying. So see how, this is a move that I am just simply playing. I'm stopping the move that I didn't want you to play, which was e5, right? I'm pushing mm -hmm. e5 myself, I'm bringing my knight out, and then I'm castling. Perfect logical sense in terms of strategy. Nobody dies, right? I'm not doing anything crazy. It's as simple as, I, as it can be. I'm not throwing pieces away. I'm not doing any tactical weird resources. Everything goes normally, but it's going in a way that eventually if you do not keep up with my moves, or if you do not try to uh, get into your ideal position, which is something that you, you should try to diagnose here, what do you want to do and what's your ideal position? So what do you think it, it is with the white pieces? Um, let's say probably... 
like from the position, like what would be the most to make the best of what I've got so far? Exactly. I mean, what would be the best position that you, that you could aspire to in terms of solving your problems and getting your pieces into the best squares possible? Um, maybe uh, here, here. Um, and maybe something like that, or doubling up in a file. Um, all right, I like Does that. that. But nonetheless, something that I don't like that much is to play v3, because I think yeah, that probably is not the, the best way to proceed, right? And also your bishop has no square to go backwards. So yeah. if I were you, I'll try to get into this position. Probably rook e1, maybe bishop e3, mm -hmm. Knight d2, maybe knight f3, queen d2. I mean, let's make the arrows of different colors so that it does it does, it does not become a mess, right? So rook e1, yeah. bishop mm -hmm. e3. Now, when uh, my knight from here to here, probably, my queen um, would go here, my rook can could come to d1, and then I'm also generating threats like bishop h6 in the future with my queen on d2, of course, and trying to get rid of his bishop on g7, which is really annoying, for example. Also, my pieces are all coming towards the center, everybody's just working fine, nobody's signed yet, and everything seems to be making sense. If that's not my ideal position, another position that I could aspire to would be something like bishop e3, knight d2, f4, knight f3, queen um, e2, maybe, or queen d2 eventually, rook e1, and then try to generate pressure with my center. Yeah. That could be another ideal position, right? So. But bishop f4 is a move that I don't like that much because, I mean, you're not doing that much with that move. Like, it is not like... Mm. Easily defendable. Yeah, at the same time, you're giving me a, somewhat of a tempo here after e5, and yeah. that could be annoying. So maybe bishop a 3 is a move that I could play here. Nonetheless, bishop f4 makes certain logical sense as well, but I don't know. I think that here after I win the, the, the tempo with e5, then that's annoying because mm. I am simply solving my problems and castling and doing everything I want and you're losing more tempo. So even if yeah. your bishop goes to g3, it's not doing that much there. Like, where no. do you have more squares? On e3 or on g3? e3. So also, uh, I think that generally when you're playing against Sicilians, the bishop goes to e3 because it has more squares to go to eventually. And that could be really yeah. nice. So uh, see, uh, see how here in this position, maybe bishop f4 is not so accurate, right? Maybe also, mm. I'm, I'm just throwing some ideas, right? I'm not even uh, thinking about what the computer will say in this position. I'm just trying to solve my problems in the most uh, efficient way, if that makes sense. So bishop f4, d6, knight d2. Here in this position, you said that maybe queen f3. And queen f3 was a move that I kind of like because you're generating x rays here. Like, for example, queen um, takes f7 is, an, is a threat. And I was afraid that if I played e5, for example, then bishop takes e5 was winning. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I thought queen f3 might be an interesting move. Nonetheless, I'm not so sure if that's going to work eventually. I, I guess I have some other moves. Like maybe even just simply e sits here or something like that, or maybe just simply yeah, maybe he sits here. The knight of sits and d five or anything like that, or mm, yeah, I should try to figure out a way. Yeah. Maybe e sits, but queen f three seems active, you know. Yeah, it does. But even even knight uh, f six, I'm sorry, I, can, I still can't push it without going using the g pawns or oh yeah, because uh, e e what e five. You, you'll just take with your pawn. So. But I didn't like knight of six so much because after e5, pawn takes, bishop takes. My center no, does not yes. seem the same, right? It's kind of messy. My rook is being attacked. Everybody seems to be a little bit collapsing now. You're playing rook mm. d1, winning a tempo my queen. It doesn't seem so nice for me. My king is still on the center. That could be really annoying. I, I, I guess eventually out of this position, I could um, get into an equal position. But nonetheless, it is not like the ideal situation that I would get into because now I do not have the d-pawn, which is what I want to move to d5 and to get the control of the center. So maybe knight of sits directly is something that I don't know what, that I do not want to play. Maybe even e sits, and then yeah. followed by d5. But nonetheless, after e sits, rook d1 is coming as well, generating pressure, and I cannot push d5 because bishop takes v8. So I should try to figure out the answer. And if I do not find anything better than knight of sits, then I'll play knight of sits in this situation, for example. So, yeah. um, here, 
92 is a move which is a little bit more passive. I was expecting knight, uh, I was expecting queen f3. I thought that was the most annoying move, and I thought that, that was the, the move that I was a little bit afraid of. You know, like wow, well, if queen f3, what do I do then? Because this is annoying, you know, and I have my king on the center, and I need to figure out a way to get out of here. Also, yeah. remember that when you have a king on the center and it's not yours, of course, something that you want to do is to open files, right? How come? Mm. Because you're generating attack. So you have to always be considering how to try to take advantage of this king on e8, and maybe the way to do so is with moves like e5. If queen f3 is a move that is allowing you to play e5, that would be really nice for you to do that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, 92. See how one more time we're diagnosing, we're evaluating what's going on, every single one of the pieces. We see that the king is on the center, we go like, mm, I'd like to keep that king on the center. How do I do that? Or I'd like to open files on that king. I'll, I'd like to get my queen out so that eventually I can put a rook here, generate pressure on the queen on the eighth, and maybe even generate a pin so that it's not so easy for him to push d5 or e5 in the future and simply get a really strong center. See how we're playing a little bit more actively. Does that make sense? Yeah. So 92 makes sense. But queen f3 goes a little bit more with the spirit of the position, in, in my opinion, here. So that could be better. So, knight e2, e5, right? What, are, what am I doing here? All right, you then play queen f3. Now queen f3 is not going to be so strong anymore, because you do not have e5, mm -hmm. right? So, you go backwards, knight f6, queen f3, and now it's not so strong. You, you cannot play e5, what are you going to do, right? So queen f3 now yeah. does not make that much sense, if you ask me. Because uh, the problem that you have is that your queen is going to f3, that's cool. But nonetheless, you're stopping yourself from playing moves like f4, which is fighting for the center. Yeah. And, I... and at the same time, something that I don't like that much is that this knight on d2 doesn't seem to do anything. You know? So mm. that could be annoying. In this position, queen f3, kind of dubious. At the same time, you're getting into this f race. That could be annoying in the future. Yeah. I don't like queen f3. It, it doesn't seem to me like the best way to proceed. No. I would. Yeah, I've, I've started regretting uh, bishop. Uh, was it bishop g3 and queen f3? Uh, I don't know. I sort of mid game when I couldn't push the g and f pawns. And, uh, and see, yeah, I was, I was left left with a weak h pawn after going to h4. Should have moved to h3, but not having the g pawn to push. Exactly. And not being able to push the f pawn really, really hindered my middle, like the late middle game. But we're gonna talk about it in a second, just in a while. Oh yeah. Also, something important here is that all right, here you decide where do I have to move my bishop? Do I have to go to e3? Do I have to go to g3? And then you consider the 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 cons and the pros about it, and you go like, all right, if I move my bishop to g3, I basically have a pawn, you know? Yeah. So what do I do? Maybe bishop e3. I mean, you have to be careful with e5, of course, but uh, this is a move that I would give a thought or two because um, basically I'm having way more mobility here. So yeah. that could be something to consider. If you realize that maybe bishop e3 is not the move that you want to play after you have considered this deeply, um, then you can go with bishop g3. You go like, all right, bishop e3 might not be so good because maybe d5 is really strong. And then I'm not only losing up uh, tempo with my bishop, but then after move like d5, my uh, after move like d4, my bishop has no squares to go to. And then that could be really annoying. For example, that could be a really nice uh, way to discard bishop e3, if you will. Uh, nonetheless, you have to, to have it in mind, right? Like bishop e3 has more mobility, maybe that could be the move. Uh, maybe in this position, not necessarily the best, but you, you have to consider this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. bishop g3, knight f6, everybody goes out. See how I'm just getting into my ideal position, right? Mm. Everybody's going to the place, nobody's dying yet. I just need to play d5 eventually and everybody's out. And your pieces are still all over the place. They do not have a clear objective. As my objective with the black pieces is simply to break in the center and your pieces have no objective at all, do not be a surprise when your pieces are doing nothing and my pieces are doing something. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because my pieces are trying to get to, to some point, are trying to get to some result, and yours are just all, all over the place. So that's a little bit of lack in terms of planning, which you could solve with evaluation, with planning, out of evaluation, with generating an ideal position and trying to get there. So, in this position, one more time, queen f3, kind of dubious. I don't think that's necessarily the best move. Maybe something like even knight f3 could be eventually, or rook e1, mm. or queen c2, or something like that. 
So you are still bringing your rooks towards the center, trying to finish your development properly, maybe getting your pieces into, best, into better squares. Uh, maybe even bishop b3 with ideas of being a little bit prophylactic, that could be nice. And in this position nonetheless, see how queen f3 is not a part of our plans when we were here, for example. Yeah. Right? It is Queen f3 is not coming in our plans. So, now, not working so much. Rook d1, all right, that makes sense. Queen e7, probably not the best move, because, well, I, I was trying to figure out a move which would uh, defend my pawn here, get rid of my queen in this file so that I am not pinned anymore, and at the same time give some squares to my rook. But the problem that I had was that the bishop on g3 and the rook on e1, when you moved it, uh, if you ever did, um, the problem that I had was that pawn on e5 was a little bit weak and that could be annoying for me. So I was trying to figure out a way to solve that problem. Like for example, see how if you play rook e1 and I play d5 eventually, you take, I take, and then the pawn on e5 is falling, you know? Yeah. So that's something that I didn't want. And nonetheless, the queen is not the best defender for the pawn on e5. I wanted to defend it with maybe the rook and the bishop. So I was trying to figure out a way to proceed. Maybe another way to play actively this position could have been queen a5 or queen b6. Um, so with some ideas of generating it when a little bit more of a space for my queen, generating threats here, and maybe then just bringing my rooks all over the place, something like here or here, and then try to push d5 eventually. So that could be nice. But um, in this position, queen e7, I was expecting you to play rook e1, and then you played h4. And I go like, what? h4 here. The problem with h4 is that you're not noticing that after I play, for example, knight here, yeah. and you go backwards, then I'm taking on h4, you know? So that's not so good. Also, is h4 solving the problem that you have of your rook doing nothing here? No. What's your immediate problem? Um... Undeveloped rook uh, and a weak pawn there. Yeah, and how do you solve that? Rook e1. Yeah. I mean, uh, imagine that I play knight h4, right? I don't think that knight h4 was something to be so worried about. Like, for example, rook e1. Mm. Uh, let's go to rook e1. Knight h4. Of course, I'm threatening to take your bishop, but even if I do, I mean, this bishop is not doing that much. Yeah, that's true. Like, all right, you're getting rid of one of the pieces that are not doing that much. And at the same time, well, maybe you're giving some room for your knight to come in, in the future or something like that. I'm just throwing some ideas. But I don't think h4 is so relevant in this position. h4, kind of dubious. d5, because see how as you didn't play rook e1, then I don't need to defend the pawn on e5 anymore and I can push to d5 directly, you know? Before I was afraid because mm -hmm. after rook e1, d5 is losing the pawn. But now I can just do it freely. You know, see how in this position you are not either solving your problem or increasing mine. You're generating even more problems yeah. for you. So if you play rook e1, you solve your problem, increase mine, and that's a better way to proceed here. See how it's just simple. It's not anything too crazy. It's not anything too weird, too, um, um, I don't know, genius or anything. It's just simple, right? It's like, now that you see it, maybe you're like, whoa, I, I, and I didn't thought about it. I didn't think about it. That's weird, right? So h4, d5, and in this position, things are starting to get a little bit weird, right? Yeah. Like, um, you do not have the maybe, space. I, I don't know, maybe that would have been better, bishop to d, d3, because the bishop on uh, b3 was a very big target there. Um, it's hard to, to tell, because now you're paying the consequences of not defending, mm. you know, of not playing properly a strategical chess. Does that make sense? See how yeah. now almost any move that you make is not gonna be the best move or because, I mean, in this position, now you have to pay the consequences of not defending on if, or not generating pressure on E5 and solving the problem with your rook, generating net rates and all of these things. Now it's kind of late, right? It's like um, when you get punched, you already got punched. Now you have to go about it being already punched, you know, it's not so easy. So, uh, in this position, bishop b3, I guess, makes sense as well, because at least your bishop keeps an eye uh, here and you are still protecting the pawn on b2 somehow. But nonetheless, things are starting to get messy, and I don't like that much of the position. So, bishop b3, and see how I just got to the ideal position. Yeah. Just got to it. Like, this is exactly what I thought here. You know? This is exactly what I wanted. 
and you didn't stop me, you know? And somehow I stopped you a little bit from getting into your position with these kind of moves, getting a little bit of initiative, and somehow playing e5, getting you out of the center, at the seat, winning some tempi eventually, and here I am, like the position that I wanted to play. So now I have to figure out what's my next ideal position here, and how to take advantage of the space that I have, and how to take advantage of the control of the center that I have. So, that being said, what do I do now? I played in this position, uh, I play this position to the point where I have central control. So now I have to materialize that because I'm not going to win just because I have the control of the center, right? I have to do something else. And in this position, for example, one more time, I just sit down and I try to evaluate and I try to figure out how to proceed. So now maybe as this knight is not doing that much, it will be nice if I take this bishop and I keep the pair of bishops, right? That's yeah. something I'm thinking. Also. Um, something that will be nice is that eventually uh, this, pawn, this, pawn, this bishop on b3 will not have a lot of squares to go to if you play c4, mm -hmm. if I play d4 for example. Like in this position I'm thinking knight h4, right, or sorry, knight h5, rook e1, this is exactly what I thought, knight takes, queen takes, d4, why? Because then your rook is not doing that much, I'm generating a pass pawn. If you take an opening the position, which means that I have the pair of bishops, and that yeah. means that I'll have advantage, I can defend this pawn and try to push it, and then I'm materializing the advantage. See how I came from having a central control, and I came from having material, um, I came from having a space control, to materialize it to a pass pawn and a space control. Does that make sense? I'm adding, adding yeah. up a little bit. Also, I'm materializing it through the pair of bishops. And, and my pair of bishops are having a really decent mobility once I move my C pawn. And also, I'm trying to push the pawn. You see that? Yeah. One more time, I'm diagnosing what's my problem. My problem is, well, my knight is not so good. And I, of course, look at every single one of your pieces. I go like, what's, what do I want to do here? How do you, how do you take advantage of, of all of these things? And something I'm noticing in your game is that what you're doing is basically you're not trying to blunder, but you're not playing for a better strategic way, you know? Mm. See how you're constantly thinking, am I blundering here? Am I losing a piece? That's, that's good. I mean, I have nothing against that. But add to that, how can I take advantage of the position in terms of a strategy? What can I do here to improve my position? How do I keep my best pieces and how do I get rid of my worst pieces? while at the same time I get rid of his best pieces and keep him with the worst pieces that he has. Does that make sense? Yeah. So see how one more time, as I trade this knight for this bishop, I'm keeping you with this knight and this bishop, which is gonna be horrible in the future. So, knight h5, rook e1, knight takes, queen takes, your queen goes to g3 where it's doing nothing, d4. Why? Because I know that if you push c4, then this is a pawn, you know? Yeah. And that's not going to fly. See how I'm playing c5 just immediately after? Because I, had, I do not only have um, a pass pawn here. Now I have this bishop which is not working. And at the same time, I have the pair of bishops and I have the central control. So it, you didn't even think about this. But I was t totally about it. I was just thinking constantly about this. I was like, what do I do now? How can I proceed? Because just having central control is not going to win the game. I have to materialize it. I have to get it into something tangible. So, knight f3, one more time. And here it's hard to propose a move because one, here you're starting to pay the consequences. A move yeah. uh, that I thought might work was bishop here, for example. I just saw that, yeah. Why? Um, because you're giving a little bit more space to your bishop. And, yeah. well, it's better than having it on b3. So I thought that <laughs> could be better. So what do I do? You played knight f3. And here is, yeah. it's really hard to, to propose a move or a way to, to proceed. Because even if you try to break the center, then that's helping me. Because you're giving yeah. mobility to my bishop, you're giving mobility to this bishop, and eventually my rooks are going to take advantage of that. So your bishop at the same time is doing nothing. And if your knight goes to f3, it's doing nothing. Maybe the best square to have a knight here would be knight e3. But how do you get there? And do you know why I do say knight e3? Uh, stops the pawn from moving. You are blockading the pawn, right? And that's something that you mm. want to do with pass pawns. You want to blockade them. And the, and the best guy to blockade a pawn is a knight, so, right? And that's yeah. see how many times you have to, or how many tempi do you have to wait here to get your knight to d3, right? And that, when you get to d3, then I'll be probably pushing f5 and opening the position even more. So in this position, 
Night of three, I go like, all right, and see how you're thinking about how to stop this pawn from advancing and how to improve the position of your knight. You're just moving your knight to, the th to f3, but is your knight on f3 doing a lot? No, I sort of wanted to um, put pressure on the e e5 pawn, but like I, I, di I didn't count the pieces, and there was no way of getting another piece there. Exactly. So, and see how yeah. you sit down here one more time and you try to analyze the position and then you try to come with the best defense because sometimes in chess we're down. Yeah, that happens and we have to defend. So it is not always about ta about taking crazy tactics and going crazy. Sometimes it's about playing it slowly and trying to figure out the way to proceed. So maybe this could have been an idea, you know, something that you could apply in your game. Um, nonetheless, your rook is not doing anything, your pawn on e4 is still weak, your pawn on c4 does not seem to be doing that much, except just locating your bishop, things are starting to collapse, I, I would say that. So, knight f3, and it seems like nothing is really happening, right, because we're equally material, and the position seems to be a little boring position. Maybe this mm -hmm. queen on g3 is also kind of silly, it's not doing that much, um, mm -hmm. a move like queen d3 could have come not sure about it, but at least you're centralizing your yeah. queen a little bit. Doesn't seem so nice, but it's something, right? Um, yeah. Maybe a better move could have been, I don't know, knight f1 to move your knight to g3, so that at least you're defending on e4 and you're not making it so easy for me to break eventually. If you're, But even then, it's really hard to propose a move. So, knight f3. Seems like the position is more or less equal in terms of material, but dynamically, this is really hard to play. So, bishop c6. Why? And here you said... Why do you play bishop c6? Bishop mm. c6 has a couple of things about it. The first one, due to the fact that the only active square that you have with this bishop is bishop a4, bishop c6 mm. is stopping you from doing so. That's nice. I like that, right? Also, at the same time, due to the fact that the rook is on b8, and due to the fact that this is a weakness, a way to proceed could have been simply to play a5, a4, a3 and get rid of my weakness and generate one in your position and another here. Does that make sense? Yeah. See how? One more time. All right. I have the space. I have the pass pawn. I have the pair of bishops. But that's not going to win by itself. I have to materialize that into something tangible one more time. See how? I'm just transforming the advantage all the time. Transforming. I transform here, have some advantage, try to make it some other advantage, then try to make it some other advantage, and eventually it just um, comes out being material advantages, or just simply comes out being uh, mobility advantages, or comes out being mate, or something like that. But it just slowly and progressively. And this is something that you should try to incorporate in your games. So, constantly be thinking about the best strategic way to proceed. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, Queen H3. And here, I thought Queen H3 was a horrible move. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, I, I didn't see a, a, a better move, so I was maybe I was trying too hard to make these pawns work. Yeah, but uh, this is not going to work. Because, mm. think about this. Let's imagine that you get to your, to your ideal position here. G4, H5, you take, I take, everybody takes. What are you going to do then? Mm, yeah, maybe... Knight to g3, threaten, check me, but easily defendable. Exactly. Not gonna fly, right? So, here, when you're thinking about your moves, you have to think if they are gonna be useful. And see how somehow Queen h3 is trying to throw an attack, you know, like g4, h5. But there are some things which are fundamentally wrong with this attack. And this is something that I say a lot. And I repeat this a lot because it's something that people have to comprehend. When we are trying to throw an attack, there are certain things which are going to tell us, yes, throw an attack, or no, 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 do not throw an attack, right? Do you know what they are? Mm, not, 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 not enough to list them. All right. The first thing that you have to know when you're throwing an attack is whether your king is safer than his or his king is safer than yours. So, in this position, my king seems to be a little bit safe. I mean... I have no problems in this position. Your king is somewhat safe as well. So if your king is not safer than mine and you're going to try to throw an attack, that's not a good sign, you know? Like, you're probably not doing that much. Like here in this position, throwing an attack is really hard because my king is not unsafe, right? So that's the first red light that you have to, to think of, right? The, f the second thing, do you have more pieces attacking than your opponent has defending? 
you have a queen and you have a knight and I have a bishop, a rook and a queen. Mm. So that's another sign that's telling us, all right, do you want to, it's almost as if you see seven guys sitting in, a, in the street or something like that and you go like, hey, do you want some trouble, dude? Do you want me to kill you or something like that? And they just come and kick your ass, dude. It's not gonna work, right? So you have to be really careful with that. It's not, do not be delusional about it. So three pieces against two pieces. That's another red sign. Another thing that you have to consider, the central control. Who has the control of the center? Do you have the control of the center? If you don't have the control of the center, that's a green light. But nonetheless here, this doesn't seem like you have the control of the center, you know? Like, this is really strong. And it's really hard for you to take advantage of, of, of any of this. So, due to the fact that you, don't have, you do not have a better king than, me, than mine, you do not have more pieces attacking than I do have defending, you do not have um, more space than I do, you do not have more control of the center than I, than I do, you do not have better pieces than I do, or you do not have more development than I, than I do, throwing an attack is not throwing an attack, it's just being reckless, you know? Yeah. So, in this position, I understand why you play Queen H3, because it's really hard to find a move, and even for me in this position, I will be like, what the hell do I do here, because it's really hard. But, think about it, right? And try to incorporate that whenever you're throwing an attack, that's something that you have to see. Because throwing an attack is not something that you do because you want to do. It's more something that you do because the position asks you to do that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, queen h3, and I go like, all right, you're getting your pieces even more towards the, cor the corners, two positions where they are less active. And I go like, okay, a5. How come? Because here in this position, I do have even more pieces attacking than you have defending, right? <laughs> the opponent b2. Also, I'm trying to get rid of this weakness. Also, at the same time, if I get rid of this weakness, eventually I'll generate weaknesses here and here. At the same time, if I do play something like this, I'm forcing you to react, I'm winning a little bit more of space, and um, eventually I might even try to push something like F5 so that I generate a really, really strong um, mm, yeah. control with my pawns, right? So, Rook D2 seemed to make sense for me. Bishop H6. But here, rook d3 didn't make that much sense. I thought that maybe rook here was a move. Wasn't so sure. Because... Sure, the pawn and then... Yeah. No, this is falling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't gonna work. So I, th I think a better move was rook, rook to e2. Or maybe simply rook b1, oh. I guess. I suppose, that would do. Yeah. But yeah, rook e2 seems to be a little bit better. And even then, the position seems to be, like for example, after doing something like this, <laughs> Yo, backwards. Yeah. And I was thinking about this maneuver in almost all the game, you know, because I wanted to, to attack this point on C on C on C four. Something that I wanted to do. Yeah. So C four. Yeah. And see how something that I wanted to do as well was bishop d seven, bishop h six. If you move your queen to g three, bishop f four, and then basically bishop e six, bishop takes c four in the future. So rook d two was not gonna work, apparently, for what mm -hmm. we have just said. Bishop h6, go up, and now suddenly, see how out of just increasing the pressure and making my pieces work decently, whereas your pieces are going restrained, I just can simply try to materialize the advantage and make it something tangible now. I can take this pawn on b2, now I am taking on a2, and I have a pawn of advantage, a, pawn, a pass pawn, and everything seems to be working all right, right? Pure transformations, do you see? This is something that you have to see in chess also. Um, whenever you are in a position, try to find out the strategic outcomes because you're hitting the 1800s. If you do this, you'll, you'll start to crush a lot of people because many people at this point are not thinking about these kind of things that I'm telling you. So if you incorporate these kind of things, this is going to be really nice. But also you should be playing longer time controls so that uh, you have the time to think about these kind of things. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because if you play a lot of blitz, for example, what's going to happen is that you'll keep reinforcing these bad patterns and you'll keep having them. Whereas if you play longer time controls, you can uh, incorporate these good patterns and make, it, um, make them natural and improve your chess. So, a3, well, you have to defend, right? But you were thinking about rook a3, and I was like, no, do not play rook a3. And not because of anything crazy, just because I thought that this was really passive as well. Like, yeah. What are you doing? I, I just want, I want, I wanted to get uh, defend the a pawn uh, and then maybe attack yours and create a pass pawn on my own and get it up, but I you have too many pieces that can come to the a file. Yeah, and also 
but I don't know. It, it seemed like so passive in my mind. Mm. Maybe it's the best move. I, I don't know. But it seems so passive. I guess I just simply don't like the position. A3? All right. I thought that makes sense. But at the same time, see how now I just have a way to go into your position. I have the control of the center. And I'm throwing an attack on the queen side. You know? My king is safe. My pieces are working together. My bishop is probably coming here and here, attacking the debility here. You now have one, two, three debilities, which can be attack. Your bishop on d1 is doing nothing. Your knight on f3 is out of the, of the party here. It's out of the, of the game. And that's really hard, right? So, g4. And I was like, all right, that's nice. Bishop f4. And now you, can, you cannot ever get rid of this bishop on f4. And this is not a bishop. Mm. This is almost a, I don't know... This is a, a queen nearly that's super yeah this kind of queen now because it is too strong it's too annoying see how your knight cannot go anywhere your pieces cannot go anywhere your bishop on the one and, and he just said well i'm getting stuck right so why are you getting stuck because of the little nuances i'm solving my problems increasing yours you're not solving your problems nor increasing mine simple you know really simple and it seems really esoteric and it seems really weird but it's really simple so queen f1 now your queen is going backwards you, you realize that your queen is doing nothing on h3 nonetheless you should have you should have known that here <laughs> but now you're paying the yeah. consequences of not knowing that you know so queen f1 queen b7 and see how this is what we call in chess the principle of the double debility have you heard about it Yes. And this position, what I am doing is basically generating more than one, than one weakness, which I can attack and you cannot defend. How come? Mm. Because if there are many weaknesses on the position, you only have a move uh, per turn, right? And that means that you can only defend once at any given point. And as I attack many things, you cannot defend everything. So that's basically what that is and how it works, right? And here, I'm attacking here. I'm bringing more pieces, probably playing something like this in the future. I am getting even more pieces into your position, right? See how the, the weakness of your um, of your second rank is going to be exploited. Your weakness of your, of your opponent e4 is going to be exploited. Your weakness of your opponent's e4 is going to be exploited. And the weakness of your opponent the, uh, on a3 is going to be exploited. So this is all that I'm thinking of. And you're not even di diagnosing what your weaknesses are, you know? Something important as well. You should always be thinking what are your weaknesses and if the other guy has a way to exploit them. And if that's the case, then you should try to stop me. And if you cannot, then you should try to generate, or I mean, depending on the position, of course, but you should try to generate counterplay or you should try to generate threats on my position as well. Yeah. But that's important here. So rook e2, bishop takes, rook d2, and here everything is collapsing now. There's no way to defend yeah. anything, you know? It's maybe better if it's rook takes. Exactly, mm -hmm. but even then, like, for example, rook takes, I was thinking about this, rook takes, I take, what do you do with this guy? Um, there, and, oh, forgot about the bishop, yeah, yeah, there's not, yeah, you've got to create a second rank, this. Exactly, it's just like a lot of pressure, right? And it's yeah. not to feel bad about it, it's just, we have oh, to yeah. learn, right? It's just something simple. And we have to try to incorporate this into our games. So, rook d2. And now, see how one more time I am materializing the advantage. I am transforming one more time. And this is something that you have to see because this is something that you have to know in your games. I am materializing my little space advantage due to the fact that you took here, right? Now, I can push d5. I have what I wanted. How do I get more? Well, if I get rid of this guy and trade it for this one, all right, and then I push, and I have the pair of bishops, I have an open position, or, or if you close, then you have a really bad bishop, uh, la 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 la, whatever, and then everything seems to work out, right? So, bishop f4, bishop takes, takes, and this is just over. I mean, it's a queen for a bishop, and this is just yeah. too much. 